Hey guys, welcome to my how to do a woodland base. So here we go. First thing is we're going to paint the base with some dryad bark. Now in the past I've been known to either do dryad bark or uh, another color that works pretty well is Morn Fang Brown. And it's really a more personal choice. I decided to go with this because I feel like it's a nice darker, earthier brown to build up from, but no right or wrong way. And we're gonna let that dry for a second. And while we let that dry, we also want to prep our, our woodland flock. So the flock that we're gonna be using is a hobby, oops, hobby round spring undergrowth from Gale Force 9. And we're also using Army Painters, Army Battlefields, Poison Ivy, and Metal Flowers. Oh, I first saw Metal Flowers off of this awesome video. The name of the, the channel uh, escapes me at the moment, but he built a, or he painted up uh, three Stooges themed um, they're like a Three Stooges ogre fantastic fantastic very funny model and then he used these ivy flowers at the end and I thought they were just so funny and cool and I decided I I wanted to do something just like that okay second color we're gonna use is Steel Legion Drab and we're gonna paint right over right over the dryad bark. Okay, the last color we're gonna use is Rackarth Flesh, but we're gonna let this um, Dryad Bark and Steel Legion Drab, we're gonna let it dry for just a second. I'm gonna put it under the heat lamp here and see if it can dry a little bit faster, and then we'll come back and hit it with the Rackarth Flesh. Okay, so we're taking our Rackarth Flesh and we're going to do a very light dry brush on top of what we've already done. And that's kind of the look that we have right there. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to add all of the different uh, flocking elements. I like to go with three. I used to do two, just a, a flock and the, gosh, what was the other one, like bushes, like clump foliage. And I thought for, for forests, that would be, that would work great. But then, um, I don't know, I've been really liking this way of doing it as well. So either will work. So we're gonna start with our spring undergrowth. Now, depending on what season also you want your forest to be in, that might also change a little bit of the look of it. But basically what we wanna do is put a little bit of this foliage in the majority of the space. And what I'm using is some Ross's brand white glue, all-purpose white glue. I think in the, over the pond, they call it PVA glue. Here in America, we call it Elmer's glue. And what I'm going to be using to apply it with is a toothpick from Like Like Drive-In. Some of the best food in Oahu. So what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of the glue right here at the front and tease like a line next to the foot going towards the back. I'm sorry, I'm gonna pull back so you can see this better. What I've noticed with flocking is Less is more when you're putting this on. 
you don't want to splatter the whole base with it but at the same time you don't want it to look too sparse otherwise it's like you're out in a field rather than under a forest canopy so I've got the front section of the base pretty well for my shadow warrior here I gotta be careful in the back because you don't want to get any of this glue on the bottom of his cape but that's that should do it for now so I'm gonna put our toothpick, toothpick to the side and try to find some nice tweezers I like tweezers because they can really get in there and uh, you don't have to worry about too much too much spare flop flying all over the place and the best tweezers are these flat handled one or flat headed ones and what I do is I'm gonna take my model kick him right over hold him actually right over the flocking and basically just take some of it and dump it on the base so that any excess falls right back into the tin. And you'll see, this is why I love Gale Force 9 products because it's not just, I mean, Games Workshop sells this grass. Uh, most places sell just the grass, but this undergrowth flock has like so many different colors. You can see some reds, oranges, yellows. A fantastic combination and different textures. all over the base here. I know I said less is more, but it seems to be that the, it seems to appear that the flock and the glue is just kind of spread out, which is okay. Um, and if you want to really get creative with the different levels of flock, you could have some glued together in like a little mound and other areas being a little bit more flat. So you can show some, some variety in the heights in the heights of the flocking. There, and you see you end up with this really nice kind of undergrowth look for your model. So I'm gonna brush off whatever is remaining in there, push this off to the side, and we're gonna get into the metal flowers. This is a fantastic product. I love this product so much. You just you get this blanket of yellow and white flowers and you just take a... For this one we're going to be using this sharper needle pointed or sharper pointed tweezers and you just rip off a little clump of these flowers and then you put it on the base. So what we're going to use is... And actually I like to put some super glue on beforehand to adhere it to the base because it's clear um, it's gonna it's gonna stick harder than the the Elmer's glue I've, I've seen people use either or though so it's it's up to you basically I'm just gonna go with super glue because uh, it's my preference personal preference All right so we get that glue onto the base And then we're gonna take, I'm gonna go with some white flowers here. Just gonna pull it off the pad. And you don't need too much. Stick that on there. And it'll stick on at an angle, which is great. Kind of want it to clump up and have like a little bit of clumpiness to it. Stick it on at an angle and just kind of play with it so that you get some height. Look at that. You don't really need too much of these flowers and they create this fantastic little pop to your base. You could add a little bit more, but I'm going to leave it at that. I don't want to add too much because if you add too much too much flowers it's gonna it's gonna look really messy. So I'm gonna leave that as it is 
Then we're gonna go on to the poison ivy. Same thing as the flowers, you're just gonna take your sharp pointed tweezers and I don't think you even need to take it out of the package here. And I'm gonna put this around the head of the, or the helmet of this dark elf that he's standing on. You don't have to. Um, you can make your own surface area to put the, the poison ivy and stuff onto. I've decided to just use what is on this base already. Kind of like it's growing over. This is the last part of the video, so we're gonna kind of speed it along here. And I'm just gonna take my tweezers, pull off a little bit of this poison ivy clump, and wait. Oh, I see it doubled. So you don't, like, like I said, you don't need too much. We're just gonna pick away a little. area there. I think this might even be too much, but you can see it creates this really nice looking natural foresty appearance. And we're just gonna peel off as much as we need and we're gonna gently put it right on the base here. Move it around so that it naturally follows the flow of where the helmet is. And we have this little part of the poison ivy that's sticking out there at the side, so it creates this nice little uh, flow of motion. Let me put the rest back in our poison ivy stand, and there you have it. A forest base that you can use for any of your elf figures, or uh, any figure that you want to be tromping through the forest, maybe beast men, um, maybe chaos whatevers that you have marauding through the forests. And uh, if you've seen my other High Elf Shadow Warrior, it also uses the poison ivy and the flowers and the flocking, and I think they look really great. So let me know if you have any questions. Again, that's Army Painters, Army Battlefield, Poison Ivy and Metal Flowers, and Gale Force 9 Spring Undergrowth Flock. Thanks for watching. Latest players!